With the unforeseen future of a scandalous love triangle ahead of them, it's out there if you fancy a Google, real-life friends Kiefer Sutherland and Jason Patrick battled it out in this greasy saxophone-playing, mullet-wearing, 1960s biker film-riding, Californian direction-giving, comic book reading, earring wearing, Peter Pan fever dream having Joel Schumacher steam fest. It's the most broody, angst-filled vampire flick to ever drive its grimy fangs into the neck of Hollywood blockbusters. The Lost Boys came onto the scene in 1987 only to change the course, face, and style of the vampire film forever. Its style and creature design may have inspired the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, among others, but the concept of the ugly vampire was not necessarily a new one. Two years prior, the world was treated to Tom Holland's Fright Night, a film that vowed to make vampires scary again. Not since the 1920s silent film Nosferatu were vampires portrayed in such a grotesque and deformed manner. But what Fright Night and the Lost Boys did was create a hybrid of sorts. They combined all of the grotesquerie of Nosferatu with the forbidden seduction of the sexy bloodsucker. So one must certainly not forget the influence of Anne Rice's Interview with the Vampire novel in 1976 and what she brought to the genre. Without counting Phantom of the Opera, as I am often prone to do, Boys is without a doubt one of the most musical films that Joel Schumacher has ever made. We hear borderline full renditions of now iconic cult songs. I'm speaking, of course, of Fry Little Sister, live saxophone jams, as stated before, and are even treated to two different versions of the Doors song, People Are Strange. Because people sure are strange in the fictional California town of Santa Carla. That is unless you call staying out all hours of the night riding motorcycles when you're not flying through the air looking for a tasty human to pluck from the ground like a fiendish hawk with a bloodthirsty appetite normal. Most people would call that strange. This includes the unsuspecting family of three at the center of this story. They just moved in down the lane with an aim to fit in. They may just have to conform in the worst way in order to do so. It's just as the locals like to say, you know? If there's one thing about living in Santa Carla that I never could stomach, it's all the damn vampires. It's what they like to say. The Lost Boys cast is extremely strong, just another fine example of a perfect assemblance of fine actors worthy of an Oscar in casting directing, if there was such a thing. Diane Weist is especially terrific. I'm pretty sure that Corey Haim's character was intended to be a gay surrogate of sorts for Joel Schumacher. The director has never hid his orientation, especially when considering his two Batman films. There are a few clues scattered about, including a certain Rob Lowe poster hanging in his room. Jason Patrick is intended to be a sort of Jim Morrison surrogate. Also due to the on-the-nose usage of pop culture wall art, as well as his character's Morrison-esque look, when push comes to shove, there's just no two ways about it. This movie is, in a word, a right.